My name is Dr. Innocent Obanum. I am an architect, a designer. Um, I have a company called Ngonyama Okpan and Associates. We've been around for the past 35 years. We have offices all over Nigeria, uh, also all over Africa, as a matter of fact. We focus mainly on addressing the issues of infrastructure deficits all over Africa. Oh well, the hospital we have for the South is, is a unique um, tertiary specialist facility in the sense that it's three in one, where you have the acute care, you have modern child, and you have the geriatrics. What does that mean? That um, if you happen to be born in that hospital, you may live around that hospital until the day you go to your grave. You don't need to travel anywhere else for your medical treatment. Um, it's going to be the first of its kind in the whole of West Africa, actually in the whole of Africa as a matter of fact. And our intention is to showcase that healthcare facilities can be actually done differently. Uh, it pains me when I see that Nigerians have to spend quite a number of resources going all over the world for healthcare treatment. And the funny thing is that when they travel overseas, they end up being treated by Nigerian specialists. But the reason why they have to leave is because we haven't developed the vision of actually doing things ourselves. We have the skills, we have the human resources, but what you lack is only the infrastructure. That's, that's only the only missing, missing link. Because if they can afford to pay, I would say thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars, which when you put it together, it goes into billions of US dollars wasted every year in medical tourism. Why travel overseas if you can have these things done locally? And the same thing will happen also in our um, tertiary institutions. Why should we send our kids to go and study overseas? Why? Because we lack the infrastructure. And if we focus on trying to develop these infrastructures ourselves, we shouldn't be losing our kids. And because once they go there, they never come back. As a matter of fact, one of, most, of my, uh, most of my colleagues who left for overseas, like myself, we never come back to this part of the world because of lack of infrastructure. So, what Martin Naji and the others and the Pascal Dozier and the other board members are doing for the South is, is remarkable. You know, they in their 60s and 70s or 80s, but they're trying to prove a point that if we put our hands together, um, Southeast can be a region to reckon with, not only in Nigeria, but worldwide. Uh, um, you know that when such a, an infrastructure is put on ground, then we will have a manpower gap in terms of the skilled medical personnel that can handle that level of responsibility. How do you intend to bridge that gap? Oh well, your question is actually um, correct. As I said earlier on, manpower is never the issue. The key issue is infrastructure. We have enough medical personnel in all fields, from Nigeria and especially from Southeast, that can actually um, run the facilities successfully. For your information, um, there are several healthcare institutions in Nigeria that are affiliated with Nigerian professionals, mostly from Southeast, in Lagos, especially in Lagos, Abuja, and in, in Port Harcourt. They come here, they spend two weeks every month in Nigeria taking care of Nigerians. So if you have such a facility in Southeast, human resources are never the issue because we, we have a lot of them. The issue is that can you provide a facility and reverse the brain drain? That's what we're talking about now. 
Because once you have what it takes, you find out that Nigeria, Nigeria or Southeast is beautiful. We lack only one, one issue, the infrastructure. That's what we need, not human resources. Human resources are there. And besides, there are a lot of young graduates that could be also trained to run the facilities effectively and efficiently.